So I was playing around in Blender and I was uh, kind of accidentally made this and I thought it was pretty neat. It's a 100% procedural, you can scale texture up, you can rotate it, you can change the colors, the brightness, the value, the roughness, everything. And it does use displacement, so let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to create this procedural wooden material inside of Blender 3.1. But since it's a shader material I guess you can also use uh, other Blender builds. Anyways, let's start by clearing out the default cube and adding in a plane. Um, before we start anything else we are going to use cyclos because this Shader is going to use the displacement a fair bit so that we have those uh, wavy scribbles. Anyhow, uh, let's just set things up here. Vamp texture, open SDR. I'm just going to use this one. And just because I want it to be transparent. Film transparent and color management. Uh, film make high contrast. Yeah, that's good. It's a pretty plain. Anyhow, and shading editor. Here we go. Top view. Rendered view. Okay, new. So first thing, first thing we want to do is to make the wooden material. Um, just wood. Don't need to focus on the planks quite yet. So let's just make the wood. Shift A. Add in a texture, a nice texture, and then we are going to add in a Voronoi. With the the regular add-on enabled, hit Control T. That will, well, you get the texture coordinate nodes and the mapping nodes. We're going to use the UV coordinates for this one. And if I hit Control Shift, I'll be able to see the uh, individual nodes, textures. So connect the noise texture to the vector. That will give us this scribbly mess. Uh, however, if we change the scale of the noise and the scale of the Voronoi, there we go, it's starting to look like wood, a tiny bit. To really sell the effect, we are going to stretch the uh, textures on one axis. So, you know let's use it on the Y. Divided by, yeah, that's one. That looks good enough. So, next we are going to just add in a color mix RGB. Wait, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Shift A, color mix RGB. <coughs> so, uh, you can also use a color map if you want to. I'm just using a mix RGB because I want to group the, uh, the system later on and be able to control the color output from the outside. Let's just let's just use some wood color. Duplicate that. This goes here, and let's see. Change this. To multiply. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now we're getting those black spots. Add in a, another one. This goes to the bottom color, and this one goes to the top. I also tend to multiply high contrast. Let's see how this works. There we go, that makes the set to noise. And 
I actually forgot how to do, uh, do this one. I think that's it. Okay, and finally, just one more mixology bay. Let's go up there. Set it to mix. And set this. for the uh, the wood it's a very simple wood okay let's just start making planks now let's bring the coordinates systems down and we're going to add in another texture a brick texture because a brick, brick textures already have that repeating pattern that we want to use, but at the same time, it also has these difference in color on every individual brick. That way, we can have a different set of values uh, for each tile. Let's go. Okay, let's just connect the UV directly into the vector and let's stretch it out a bit like 2.5 there we go now this is the point when I keep forgetting here we go this one goes here that way we have the brick textures multiplying with the wood that we made and we need another one connected to a white noise this way we can control the actual colors um, more efficiently Whoop. let's just move this along We're going to take the white noise and add in a color hue saturation node. Mix into the color and then the white noise. It could be either one, the uh, color or the value. Put that into the hue. And we don't see anything because it's in, it's still in black and white. Um, which means we need to change this value now and change the factor amount change the value a bit and the saturation you kind of get to see it there we go okay we can kind of see where we're heading by the way um let's see um, Maybe it's a bit too saturated, so let's use this mixed with the original. And we have a less saturated version. And just for fun, let's just add an aid of the hue saturation node at the end, so that we can actually have a bit more control over the saturation and hue there we go so that's basically the uh, wood texturing done not, it's a pretty good number of nodes but it's not too much now comes the much much more complicated part where we need to make each individual tile its own individual tile because right now we have just a noise and a Voronoi being overlaid with a brick texture which you know t it doesn't look like it doesn't look real um, at least for me it doesn't look real so 
how are we going to offset this? Well, we already have a white noise, which is giving us a random uh, value for each part of the brick texture. If we just switch it to 4D, we actually get a seed value. And let's just switch these to 4D as well. Now, these are also kind of like seed values. I know it, for the textures, uh, I know how they work, but I don't know how to explain it properly, so I'm not. Um, cause I'll probably be giving you false information. Now then, take the color of the value, which either one, just connect it to the W of the noise and the Voronoi texture. That way, when we view it through here, you'll see that each one of these now has a different value. I think I slotted them in the wrong place. There's a little fix. Change the scale. Use that detail. It's all about tweaking. I think that looks good enough. Okay. So that's pretty much the uh, the color. This is still a flat piece. Um, now we're going to add in the uh, displacement, which I don't really like using displacement that much. Um, it's cool, but uh, my computers just can't handle it. It's, it's awful. Anyhow. Shift A, go to Factor, add in a bump. Connect the normals into the normals, and just connect the uh, color of Factor. It's, it's about the same, but um, let's just use the Factor, just for fun. Invert. There's a bit of height. And let's duplicate this, because we also want some textures from our crane. Connect this into the normal and let's just connect this directly into our height. Let's view it. It's definitely too strong and it's jutting outwards. Okay. <laughs> let's drop the strength to just 0.5 or something and invert. There we go. Now you can stop here if you want, uh, but I won't stop here because I like to put on a lot of weight on myself. <laughs> Size 0 0.001. There we go, nice and close. And the displacement factor, displacement, connect the displacement into the displacement. And we are just going to take the um, Thanks. <laughs> the brick texture, I'm going to go through, I'm going to put it through the white noise, I'm going to use the value for this one, insert it into the height, set the mid-level to zero, and set the scale to something appropriate. 
Um, as you can see, it's not doing much of anything. That's because the texture, you need to go down to the, the uh, settings, switch it from bump only to displacement and bump, and you also need to add in more subdivisions. This is why I don't like it. <laughs> ah, look at it. It's stuck. Uh, this is kind of funny. I'm trying to record this at 1.35 a.m. Just, just wonderful. Turns out it's a little bit too strong, so let's drop that a little bit more. Add in a subdivision surface. Set it to simple and just increase the subdivision. There we go, we're starting to see the actual textures. Increase that a little bit. And it looks like we need to increase the subdivision. Just, just a tiny bit more. Yeah. So right now, it is displacing correctly. It's using the correct values and all the uh, useful stuff but uh, one problem each of these planks are very parallel to the ground as you can see here from the side view um, we don't want that we want the planks to actually curve um, individually curve so We need to add another texture to this brick texture, so shift A. And I found a I found out a noise texture works best for some reason. And you can also add in I believe I used math for this one. Let's see. Uh, multiply add, connect this to the UV, view it from the top, there we go, smooth minimum, and let's just increase or decrease this, so that we get a good gradient. Point five looks good enough. Um, I think this scales a bit too much, so let's drop it down to three. And we don't need that much detail because we just want the uh, black and white coloring, or black and grey in this instance, because we don't want everything to be hundred percent flush with the uh, the ground level. Um, we take this. And we need to mix it with the materials that are going through here. Um, at this part, I don't really remember all that well. Let's just try and experiment with uh, stuff. Let's try mixing it. No, that did nothing. Mm, multiply. That also did nothing. Did that do anything? Nope. Switch it to the math node. Multiply. Oop, that's something. We are. That's definitely something. You can see it there. Just imagine just troubleshooting this on the go. Okay. So, we got our curves, it's not flat, the problem right now is the roughness. Now we could just decrease the uh, 
the shine here by increasing the roughness um, but at the same time we won't have detail on our planks which is something that I want to have and the easiest way to add smudges and stuff onto uh, procedurally onto a shader is to just use another noise texture because it's already super bumpy connect the UVs, don't forget that and skill increase that a bit and increase the details like max connect this to the roughness and we have if my computer can load it There we go, we can start seeing it now. Some places are shiny and some places are darker, which means they're less shiny. Sorry, I had to let out a burp there. Anyways, it's less shiny in some places, but it's not that strong, it's not that... You can't really see it, so... Shift A going to add in a math node, this is set to add, um, we don't want add, we want it compared, let's move to maximum, and we're going to increase and decrease this number, so that we'll get our perfect little pattern. So if you don't know about roughness maps, um, the darker um, the value, the closer it is to zero, which means it's less rough than uh, anything else. And also, if you want, we could just mix these. Um, that one and our earlier values. We can just mix those. Yeah, that looks good. And let's see the results. Yeah, that's... That's pretty good. Okay, so that pretty much the uh, tutorial, however I want to add a few more notes so that it's easier to control everything overall. So can I count those together by hitting shift and right click drag, mm, that will create this little connector node here, I don't know what it's actually called. Um, shift A, add in a factor math node and set this to scale. Now we can actually scale everything. As you can see here, it scales. Um, it, it scaled everything up, uh, even the uh, the noise section, which, uh, in hindsight, it, it it shouldn't be there. So let's just connect the noise section for the bump and displacement directly into the normal vector. Um. Yeah, let's add in a let's see vector rotate node. Add it right there, and the only important part of this node is the angle. Yeah, it's, yes, we can change the angles, and by just doing that, you can see that these planks are individual planks. Uh, well, they look like individual planks, and they are. Each one of them has a different color value uh, thanks to this white noise texture. And yeah, that's that's the uh, yeah that's the tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. It's pretty 
short as hell, long it is. 24 minutes. Nice. Anyhow. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the wooden plank tutorial. Thank you for watching.